Right hand. Oh, wait, there you go. Oh, everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Rachel Tavern. And I'm Ashley Palmer. And we will be talking about mental health. of a stigma around mental health. We should be having more discussion. Yeah, because the thing is, is like, mental health doesn't discriminate against anyone. It doesn't matter who you are, what type of family you come from, if you're the CEO of a company, like, anyone can have mental health issues. What do you think is mental health? That's a freaking loaded question. I don't check for <laughs> What are your thoughts? Mental health is keeping your mental stability and making sure that you're taking care of your, your body okay. and your brain. There's the part that's like the mindset part, but then there's the part of mental health, which is hard to talk about. Chemical imbalances. There's like the controllable and the uncontrollable. Yeah. I think that's the hard part. I'm obsessed with like self-development podcasts and books and the idea of learning how to sway your mind. Doing my fitness program and they're like, well, you can't work out six days a week. You have to work out three days a week. I'm just like, no, you can't tell me this. A year ago, Ashley, through this, I'm off the way, I'm not working out, I'm gonna go eat crap all day long, but I'm learning to change my mindset. This I can't change that like this is better for my health. It doesn't work for me. I have to be flexible, continue to do what I know is right for me. That's somewhere that I've come over the past few years when life throws you certain cards. Handling it more rationally and adult. I'm such like an all or nothing person and that is not healthy. And balance and mental health, I think, is like a key word. Mic drop. What does coping mechanisms mean? What is a coping mechanism? In my recovery, coping mechanisms is how I handle things. The way that I deal with things. I, I've learned to make my coping mechanisms rational and healthy. Being, I just always say the word flexible, adaptable, at it in a healthier way. Things weren't going my way, I would feel disconnected. I would cope by going out partying that made me feel like I was coping with that by connecting with people. It was totally fit in that state of mind. I was coping with my disconnection and waking up feeling so much worse about it. How we handle things, whether they're the healthy way or unhealthy way. Everybody struggles with something and everyone deals with it so differently and I think that's what's great about also having that discussion. Us in general and what we go through is everybody is a snowflake. Be okay with it. It's like, I can have a coping mechanism. I'm gonna go out and do something insanely stupid. Your coping mechanism could just be like flat out denial. Popular coping mechanisms is just denying things and just I'm fine. faking it till we make it. It no. works for like a week. People <laughs> know you, they'll know when something's up and like when you're trying to fake it. Uh, I mean this is totally gonna go off topic but with the denial we're not ready to accept the fact that we do have a problem because of our fear of what others are going to think. We don't want to feel weak. And the thing is too, we've been taught, actually as women, to be kind. European colonialism has enforced us to react and do different things. From so long ago, generational, generations to generations has created an emphasis on like women need to be a specific way. It's like being a mother. You wake up, you get the kids up, you get their lunches, send them to school, spend all day doing the laundry, doing the dishes, yeah. cooking, and then your husband comes home, have dinner on the table, and the kid's homework has to get done. Or maybe you actually have a headache that day. Have your you know, that's not big. You actually announce that you're not feeling well. This is very stereotypical, and that's not yeah, the way all yeah, households yeah. are. That is one of the stigmas that have been put on women from the yeah. past. You have to be perfect. You have to be a perfect wife, mom, lover, all of it. All while feeling perfectly fine yeah. and looking amazing. Such a key phrase. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine is not fine. Is what do we struggle with? I know for me, anxiety and depression, I found out in grade 8, I came to the peace with it. It was good to have that like diagnosis. From a doctor? Yeah, yeah. Be able to have that support of like, I could go talk to a counselor. But you're not alone? No, like, I'm not alone. I don't know. I wake up some mornings and it's just there. I was on the bus not too long ago and I was just sitting there I'm like, ugh. Okay, well, not me being triggered, that's just me dealing with just anxiety. Depression isn't the stereotypical Eeyore, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. They say is like these problems, they don't ever really go away. Funny, like, they'll be like, oh, it's in the back of your head doing push ups kind of thing. Like, oh. just waiting to come out. Waiting. Me, especially, to each their own. As an artist, I know this is off topic as well. I've never met one artist that doesn't have something. But is it Robin Williams? I just saw this poster on Instagram. <laughs> what you think depression looks like, what depression actually looks like. So it's like Eeyore and Robin Williams yeah. laughing. You know, yeah. really don't know. Anyways, but what do you... I struggle with fiction. Stems from a lot of insecurity, disconnection, dealt with a lot of trauma. 
found my mom dying when I was seven. I think that kind of started it. Because of that, just let's move on. I think people were trying to protect me because I was very young. And then my body started reacting. I started twitching as a young child. And it was very hard. My body is doing something. I felt so uncomfortable in my own skin. Like I couldn't control my own body. And then kids would make fun of me. I'd hear my sister or my brother say, stop. And I couldn't stop. And especially I cared so much about people making fun of me and the judgment. In grade nine, it was like weed, alcohol. By grade 10, I was doing cocaine. I would do things with boys because I made me feel validated. Everything got masked. It came with me until my 30s. I have an addictive personality, so it, the food as well. I'm not eater. You're also so a Virgo. I am a Virgo. And I'm a Virgo. Oh, for you. I'm a Virgo. I will turn to anything that gets me out of my own head. Our addictions can come and go. You reduce one, and then another will pop up, or you'll just create another. And yeah. so it's all about your mind. So I'm learning to replace those unhealthy habits and learn better coping mechanisms and dealing with my emotions. Work in progress, yeah. but you know. Substances and mental health don't mix. But that's normally how people with mental health issues cope. <laughs> We've got to try and stop that. About for me reaching out, I had to be vulnerable and not fear what people thought of me. I need to save my life. And the people that actually care about you aren't going to judge you. I recommend talking to to see a counselor is so good. I didn't like talking to my parents. I didn't like talking to my friends. I was one of those who just, yeah. the counselor, she helped me so much. Like you said before, we're all our own beings. We all have what works for us. Whatever it is, whether yeah. it's a pastor, counselor, a best friend, you're even thinking about thinking about calling or talking to someone, maybe start journaling. And just the baby step to putting it out there. We've got to be vulnerable. We have to stop thinking that this is me. Put ourselves out there to get help. Have one body, one mind. Celebrities, they even go through stuff themselves. Take their life flat for and learn from it. Debbie Lovato. Debbie Lovato. She talks so openly about it, is so open about it. She is so much more stronger. I wrote a song confident, like, hello. Like me, I learned the hard way. Relapsed many times. She got back up. I got back up. Don't forget that relapse. It's a part of the journey. You know, I sometimes Google celebrities with issues. Uh, like, you know what, if they can do it, like being in the spotlight, you can do it just being, you know, Ashley Palmer in my little condo in Toronto. <laughs> it reminds me of, um, Amber of Teen Mom. <laughs> I just went there. But she's like, I'm depressed, like an addict. She's like, I'm still freaking like working on my recovery. And honesty is the road back to success. Only as sick as your secrets. Woo! What? Ah! Thank you for joining us. I hope you guys can have discussion or open up to people. I hope you enjoyed this video. Break the stigma. Break the stigma. <laughs> Social media will be down oh. below. Follow me. Your Insta. <laughs> and I'll put some more links of different things like podcasts and suggestions. Oops. Salt lamp suggestions. Oils. Got you. We do. It's true. Oh, rhyming. Oh, oh. we should start rhyming. We're to your moms. It came to drop bombs. It got more rhymes than the Bible's got songs. Just like the prodigal son of a turn. What's <laughs> up to me? You get burned. I just realized I might be scratching my tattoo. No, I'm not. Don't. Okay. Thank you for joining us. See you in the